which I hope uh, everybody enjoys this and, and invites uh, all of your friends and their friends too. So, uh, so just you know, your friends won't be able to come in like you get to come in. Nobody else gets to come in except for guys are special for her. Yeah. So special. Yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Right. Right. Again, so again, yeah, thanks, thanks for coming over. Um, I just let tell you, have you tell me about the car, because I bet you've been paying attention to what's been going on and kind of watching our history and how we're coming to market. Um, we are now, the car goes into production in September, so now we are T-minus basically 11 months from beginning our deliveries here in the United States. Portland absolutely is going to be one of the number one markets in the U.S. to get the car first. So, like, it's, again, folks like you, Charlie, PGE, the state, the governor's office, the mayor, the support we've had the Morgan's been fabulous and that's why we're here because we look for for consumers like yourselves we look for a supportive utility company and we look for a support from the mayor's office the, the governor's office whoever to help us actually do this because as you know you can't just bring this vehicle to market you know throw the keys out there and hope somebody drives away and has a nice life it takes a lot of work um, the permit and inspection process to put a home charger in your garage and we've worked that out now so there's an online permitting process. Uh, it's the same all the way across the state, so there's not a difference by city. Uh, and then we're working on, there's levels of incentives already at the state level for this car, both for charging stations and the vehicle purchase itself. So there's a lot of things in place to make us really successful here in Oregon. We're excited. Um, what don't you know about the car? I mean, I could go through the normal pitch, but you guys probably know it as well as know that part of it as well as I do, but you tell me where you want me to start. I can start at the beginning or I can go just kind of respond to your questions. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about leasing the batteries. Yeah. Will buying be an option? Yeah, the whole issue on leasing, I'll give you a couple of reasons why you hear us talking about leasing. Uh, first, from a technology standpoint, we don't you guys are comfortable with the technology. You know that it's, it's viable and it's going to go forever. Uh, but consumers are worried about being the, I'm going to buy the first computer and six months from now there will be a newer, faster, better version and I'm screwed. We don't want people worrying about that so leasing takes that, that puts that onus on us versus them. Second, the tax credits that are available, they are tax credits. So you have to wait 12 to 14 months to fill out your IRS form to actually enjoy that tax benefit. So at the point of sale, you're spending the $7,500 you're getting back from the Fed at the point of sale. You're spending the $1,500 the state's going to give you back. You're waiting for that. So there's $9,000 there that you're waiting for sometime to get back in the future. In a lease, we can apply that immediately to your monthly payment and actually drive your monthly payments down. So that's the reason why you hear us talking about leasing. And then finally, we believe there's a secondary use of the battery outside the car. So after you, the car's got a, the battery has a 10 year useful life. You'll have 70 to 80 percent of capacity available at the end of that 10 years. But then we know that folks like utility companies are looking at those batteries as storage. So we want to, in a lease, we can then capture those batteries back, recover, reuse, refabricate, sell to the utility companies, and then have them use it. So that's why you hear us talking about these. We haven't decided. Uh, we are probably, if I were a betting man, I'm the 100% lease scenario, we don't think so. We think there'll be lease plus some kind of option to purchase for those who want to. But we're going to try and drive folks to consider leasing because we think that's best. We think How that's much? Best. How much for the car? No, for leasing. Yeah, we haven't announced final pricing yet. Uh, you hear us talk about two things. One, uh, like size family sedan. So think of Altima, Camry, Accord kind of pricing, navigation, telematics, you know, not the stripped, you know, no air conditioning one, but one that's got the level of equipment that this car does. So same price. It's the same price. And then the lease price is what he asked. And I've heard that would be comparable to what you would pay in gas and maintenance. Yeah, the, what you're mixing up there a little bit is that's the lease on the battery only. Right. I, yeah, I thought that's what the... Yeah, so oh. yes, we seen. Oh, I got you. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. I, I misunderstood. Um, what we are looking at on the battery side of it is just that equation. Just that equation. Supercapacitors. Pardon me? Supercapacitors. Supercapacitors. Yeah, not ready for prime time. <laughs> Uh, too costly, vibration, not, in, not, not yet, not yet. 
in conjunction with the batteries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, Carnegie Mellon. You know, there's $25 billion going into battery research and development just in the United States alone. There's going to be something new. What it is, your guess is as good as mine. We think this technology, though, is probably five, six, seven years worth of kind of, because this is pretty, this is, as far as battery capacity, energy density, stability, cost, we're pretty far ahead of most everybody else we see. So we think we've got probably a battery from a technology standpoint that will stay ahead of the curve six, seven years. Six, seven years. Then by that time, there'll be something new. There'll be something new. So this the only car company to use lithium batteries in California. Right. Zero energy vehicle. Yes, they were doing this. We've been working in lithium ion for 17 years, so we kind of know what we have. Uh, this, this chemistry is lithium ion manganese, and that extra harsh portion of manganese was chosen for stability, cost, availability, uh, the issue of uh, kind of runaway, runaway heat. Uh, you can short this battery out, the pack heats up to about 50 degrees C and stops. The chemistry doesn't go any further and everything just stops. So you're not at combustible temperatures. Um, nickel, nickel, other chemistries, don't have, they don't have that issue, they have problems. That's why we picked this chemistry in this pack. Other questions? I, I heard about a, some sort of a study where data services built yeah. into the car. Is that yeah. going to be active? Um, okay. The question is data services and information technology. If you own one of these things, which everybody does, right? If you have a cell phone that can get out to the web, uh, essentially the remote control features in the vehicle will be things like um, it's 20 degrees outside, you want to preheat your car. Dial, you get your phone, dial up your car, turn on the heater remotely, so you're using grid power instead of battery power to warm up the cabin temperature. You know, the reverse, if it's, you know, the three days it's 100 degrees here, and you want to get the air conditioner to cool it down, same thing, you'd be able to do that. He's done his homework. Yeah, I know it's only three days. And, and most of them happened last year. Um, you worry about staying in charge. So your cell phone will, if you're in a meeting and you know you need to get the 75% state of charge to get home, uh, and you're, you'll be able to dial up and get a get a re readout on your phone to say where you are. Um, if there's a circuit that break, you know, pops, or somebody tries to disconnect you, or there's a brownout and there's an interruption of your charge, your phone's going to ring, your car's talking to you and saying, hey, I, some, there was an interruption, I don't have a charge going on, you need to check it out. So have that. Um, Information technology in the car itself, navigation system. The charging stations will be already already built into the navigation itself. Uh, so your available charging stations in the area will be, be there. Uh, the GPS in the car itself, as new charging stations go, will automatically be updated by a cellular signal uh, from a global data center. It'll actually load it up. Um, you'll be able to get information to go to your PC that tracks your, you know, how much CO2 have you saved, what's your efficiency, how are you driving the car, what kind of range are you experiencing versus others. So all that information will be there for you to use. And, you know, people will probably want to delve deeper into some of this stuff than others. So in the navigation system, you'll see screens that the majority of folks will probably stop at screen two, but screen seven, eight, nine, ten, it's there if you want to kind of delve into it if you want to, to have all that information. And so a lot of it. Question. Does the Nissan have the ability to see what the cloud cars behaving? Yeah, the question is the Nissan have the ability to see. The short answer is yes. Uh, every time there's a charging event, we're basically capturing the state of charge, battery, ambient temperature, all of that stuff, because we want to understand how people are using the car and also understand how it's interacting with the charging network, and plus making sure that there's no issues with the pack. You know, checking all the cells, all of that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a cellular signal up to a satellite, and then back.